All right. Critical numbers. Um, chapter four is basically going to start using derivatives. Um, we're going to do kind of more general for right now, and then we'll get a little more specific as we go. And I'm going to try and show you this information as many different ways as I can, uh, because in college and on the AP, they do give it in many different ways. So a critical number. Basically, places where the derivative equals zero or is undefined. Now, when the derivative equals zero, that's your horizontal tangent. We've done that, actually, a few times already. Undefined, we haven't really talked about very much. And the one thing that's undefined is when you're dividing by zero. They're called critical numbers because they are the places and the only places where the original graph can change direction. It can change from increasing to decreasing. The keyword there is, you might want to add in there, it's the only place and that it can. It doesn't have to, but can. And I tried to give you two uh, potential examples based on those graphs there. I believe we've talked about this particular word already, this one on the left. What did we kind of call that before? It's continuous, but not differentiable. I have my own word for it, and the book has a different word for it. But. No, that is, that, exactly, I just said that, but not differentiable. Yeah. The book calls it a cusp. I call it more of a spike, either way. So of these two, one of them is a good picture of where the derivative equals zero, or one of them, and one of them is a good graph of where the derivative would be undefined. And I'm talking about the topmost points in each case. So in this point right here, and that point right there, what can you say about the derivative for this one on the left? At that red point. Undefined, very much so, yes, that's the undefined. And remember, the reason is, look at the slope of this one is kind of going in that direction. The slope of this one's kind of going in that direction. They're not coming together. They're not cooperating, right? And then right here, it could be pretty much anywhere, right? How about this one over on the right, though? This is when the derivative equals, because there's your horizontal tangent. And why is it a horizontal tangent when the derivative equals zero? Because what's the slope of that green line? Zero. Okay? And that's the key. Primarily, we're concerned more with the ones on the right, but the ones on the left, we need to know that they can happen. Okay, yes? I'd say that they're the only places where it can change direction, and I'd say only and can are probably the key words here. So you might want to add, it's the, they're the only places where the original can change direction, and then can is a key word. Just because there, you get a critical number there doesn't mean it changes direction. And when I say change direction, I mean from increasing to decreasing, so going up to going down, or going down to going up, or things like that. For example, if you look at this one over here, for a very long time it's going up, right? It's increasing. Oh, right there it decides I don't want to go up anymore. I'm going to go down. Okay? It decided it wanted to change directions. Same thing here, technically, it says I'm going up now. I don't want to go up anymore, I'm going to go down. Okay? It's the only places that that can happen. You good with that? Critical numbers? All right. These are key to a point. And I'll do the zoom for you again. The point or points, that's what that little apostrophe S means, that create the greatest Y value on the graph or a given interval. So I could ask you about the whole graph, or I could just say, look on this little interval here. Look from here to here. I can say, look at it all. I can do either one. And the absolute maximum is the point, the kind of the x value. You might want to write that in there. x value. Well, yeah, kind of. The x value that creates the, the greatest y value.
Well, I'm, I'm more concerned about the x value that creates the biggest y value. Because it's like when you substitute things in, you put an x in and it gives you a y. Right? And I want to know which x value kind of gives you that biggest y value. Or it could just say the whole point, it really. Once you know the y value, it doesn't really matter. With knowing that, you should be able to tell me what an absolute minimum is. By simply taking that definition right there and replacing greatest with smallest or least or something like that. Yep. Oh, or smallest, exactly. A lot of today's notes is some vocabulary and then giving you some visuals of this vocabulary to make sure that when I keep using these words, you know what I'm talking about. Now, it seems as though the only thing that changes in these next definitions is the, the adjective that I put out front. Here it says absolute and absolute, meaning absolutely it is the biggest, and absolutely it is the smallest. Relative basically means relative to what's around it. Okay. Or in other words, the point that creates, so this is the maximum, the greatest y value on a particular area of the graph. So maybe from here to here. With, with the things next to it, uh, is it a relative max? And I'm not going to give you little pictures of it yet. I want to see if you can show me little pictures. Actually, we're gonna graph one. We're gonna graph one quick, and we're gonna we're gonna see if you can tell me the answers to this. Again, this is relative to what's around it. And, well, I will tell you, I've shown you one of these already today. Well, actually, it'd be an absolute. Not bad. And with that, you should know what a relative minimum is then point that creates the smallest y value on some particular area relative to the stuff around it. These little things in parentheses at the end are just what some people call them. Some people call this a hill. Does that make sense? A relative match looks like a hill. And some people say a local max. This one's sometimes called a valley. Or a local min. I'd say the key on those last two is make sure they are not the absolute max or min in those cases. And by the end of today, I hope that you have a good distinction between critical number and then these four. You may wonder why we started with critical numbers. Well, critical numbers will lead you to these answers in a lot of cases. Is everybody good? All right, let's apply this. Let's go. All right. Determine all extrema. These are extrema. Extrema just means extremes, right? Max, min, all that stuff. That's what that word extrema means. Maxes and mins. They're the extremes, right? For y equals 2 times x minus 1. But I am only concerned about the interval negative 3 to 5. Okay. Well, let's graph this thing. That's a pretty simple graph, don't you think? What's that going to be the graph of? A line. Couldn't you write it as 2x minus 2? Right? I don't know if I have it in there or not. Let's find out. Nope. All right. That's a big bummer. But anyway, 2x minus 2, right? OK. So right there's a point, right? Up 2 over 1, right? Because that's the slope right there. Y-intercept right there. Up 2 over 1. 
up to over 1, up to over 1, and one more time. And why am I stopping there? I'm only supposed to go to 5. So do I have enough points? Well, I probably better get those other ones out. Huh? So how do I get going that other way? Well, go from here and go down 2 over 1. Down 2 over 1. Is that good or one more? One more. And why one more? Because i got to go to negative 3. That right there is the entire graph that we are concerned about with this particular example. It says go from negative 3 to 5. Are negative 3 and 5 included, and should they be filled in the way that I have them? Yes. How do you know? Brackets. Very good. So we'll just kind of call them points. It's probably the easiest way to do it. Do you believe that there is a point here that will give me a point or points that give me the greatest y value possible? on this graph. Just what you see. Is there a greatest y value? Yes. Where is that? At 5, comma 8. Do you agree? This is by far that's the biggest y value we're ever going to get on this thing, right? Because I told you to go from negative 3 to 5. Now what if I didn't stop you? That would go on forever, right? So would you really be able to give me the absolute max if I didn't close it off? No, it would go on forever, right? And so then what is the absolute max? Here it is 5, comma, 8. Okay? And we're most concerned about the, the x value, but we might as well throw the y value on there because it's so easy. Now, if there was another point that had y, but it was the biggest ever and it was a tie, you would write them both. Okay? Obviously, if there was another point out there that had 9 as a y value, well, that one wins. Okay? Is there, so that's absolute biggest. No doubt about it. With what we're looking at, it's the biggest. Is there an absolute smallest? Okay. Yeah, where is it? Negative 3, negative 8. Because that y value right there, negative 8, is without a doubt the smallest, right? Once again, if I didn't close you off from negative 3 to 5, this would just keep going, right? And we'd never know. Somebody could always do better, right? You get a better point that's further out, so we wouldn't know. Now, basically we've got it this way. I'm darkening those in because those two points are taken care of. Those two points can't be used as relative max and min. A relative max and min means if you look at the stuff next to it or around it, it is either the biggest or the smallest. So let's just pick a point at random. I don't know, right there. Is there stuff around it that's bigger and smaller than it? So is that going to be a max if there's stuff bigger and smaller around it? No, that has to be the biggest with stuff around it. Is that the biggest regarding stuff near it? No. Is that the smallest regarding stuff near it? Both sides? No. Let me pick another point. Mm, that one. Oh, I'll hit the line when you do it. Relative to what's around it, is that a max or a min? Now, some people say, well, what if you go and get that itty-bitty point right there that's right next to that one? Well, can't somebody always do better? Okay, watch out for that. If somebody can always do better, don't give that as an answer. When you're looking for relative max and min, you're looking for something more than this. So really, on this one, there aren't any. But I'll give you a little hint, and maybe put this back by your definitions would probably be a really good place for it. A relative max, um, I know you've seen them before. A relative max is like your x to the third graph when it does something like this. Is there a max? If you just look at stuff kind of around it, is there a relative max in that graph? Yeah. Where's the relative max? It's right there. Do you agree the stuff near it, if I just say look right in here, do you agree the stuff near it, that's a max relative to the stuff that's really close? Does this graph also have a relative min? Where's that? Yeah, right down there, right? How come you're calling them relative and not absolute? Well, where's one that's bigger than this one? Yeah, any of these over here, right? Where's one smaller than that one? Yeah, any of these over here. So those are relative extrema, or relative maxima, not absolute. So do you understand the difference between relative and absolute? 
So this one here, relative max, relative min, absolute max, absolute min, which one? Yeah, this is absolute because this just keeps going down. Okay, that's an absolute max. Okay, because there is no other stuff. You see how this has other stuff, so that's why it doesn't win. All right, to ease your pain here, I've just numbered them for you. One, two, three, four, five, six. I would like you to put them where they belong. So if you think there are some relative mins out there, write their numbers next to it right here. If you think there are some relative maxes, put their numbers here. If you think there's an absolute min or an absolute max, put the numbers right there. All you have to do is the corresponding number. Okay. Ooh, I meant to do something else. We'll go back to that. But do this first. Uh, we asked for a guest presenter here, but there is unfortunately not enough time. I want to give you time for your homework. So, relative min or mins, are there any? Okay, I heard that there are some. Relative min, something that is a minimum with stuff near it. Yes. One and four. One and four. Let's see if that's correct. Right here is number one. If I look right around in this little box here, is that a minimum? Is it the absolute minimum? No, you always got to check that out. Why is it not the absolute? Because there's something smaller or lower, right? And then we were told four. With stuff around it, is that a minimum? Yes. Is it the absolute min? No, because there's one lower or smaller. Okay. And the reason we didn't put six here, it's the absolute. That's why six is not here. All right, relative max. Are there any? Or was I trying to trick you? Yes, there are a couple. Two and five. Two works, five works, because we're on it. And the reason they both work is there is stuff bigger. Where is there stuff bigger? All of that is bigger. Absolute min, I think we already talked about that. That's number six. Because based on this graph, there is nothing lower. Okay, the, Both the arrows go up, right? So I'm telling you that based on what we see, this thing's not coming back. It's gone. Okay, so six is by far the lowest. Absolute max, yeah, we don't know. We know it's up here somewhere. We just don't know. Okay? Because apparently that goes on forever, and well, technically, so does that one. Okay? Um... Now, here's an interesting question. What interval could I use for this example here that would change the answer for absolute minimum? Because I just looked at the whole graph, right? But I said you could just use intervals if you wanted to. And there are particular intervals that if I used it, it would actually change some of the answers. And what, what's a good interval then to change the answer for absolute minimum? From two to five, from negative two to positive five. So you're saying from here to one, two, three, four, to there. Would that change the answer for? Oh, well, actually, yours works too. Well, yeah, because that's the absolute min right there. It still works. Yeah, it's just not what you meant. Yeah. Um, I think what you meant, thats I was going to ask that, but I noticed it worked anyway, so I was like, might as well do it. I think you meant that, and kind of like over here, right? But does this change, if I just look in between those two blue lines, does that change the answer for absolute minimum? What does it change the answer to? Four. Yeah, it's now four, isn't it? Okay, because I'm not looking at that anymore. As far as I'm concerned, though, that doesn't exist anymore. If I tell you to only look from here to here. So that there are a lot of answers to that. There isn't just one. So your actual interval would be what? Negative 2 to, uh, say, positive 2, right? Would be the actual interval that you would look at, okay? If you're looking at x values, okay? Right? Negative 2 to positive 2. That would do it. Or negative infinity to 5 even still changes it, right? Just making you think a little different. That's all. All right. Determine critical points. Again, that's places where it could change direction. 
have some of these change direction as we've been looking. Yeah, they've been changing, they've been going all over the place, right? Changing direction. That one didn't change direction very much. And some of those change direction. So we have seen a few. So critical points. How do you do it? Well, I said then use it to graph. And I'll just use the one up on the smart board because I know we're limited in how many we have right now. What does your note say? Place where the derivative. Oh, you didn't think that was going to go away, did you? That's where it is zero, yeah, is your horizontal tangent. And what is the derivative? So I need to find out where that derivative is either zero or undefined. But it's only undefined when you divide by, is there any way I'm going to put a zero in the denominator of that thing? Uh, there isn't a denominator, so how can you put zero there? So there's no places you have to worry about that it's undefined. So that's nice. But we are going to find out where does it equal zero. And of course, we're all going to be very good at this now, seeing we discussed it yesterday. That you can actually do this little maneuver when it equals zero, and only when it equals zero. If you're wondering what I did, I factored out the 12x as I was going. Because I noticed I was running out of room quickly. Yes, that's when I said, don't ever, ever do that again. In hopes that that person would remember me saying that, if nothing else, and not do it again. So now you set each one equal to zero, because this works when it equals zero. And so from this one, x equals, well, zero. And from this one, x equals one. So have we found critical points? Well, kind of. We, we found critical values. We haven't found a point yet. How are you going to find the point? I know the x value of this one is 0, and the x value of that one is 1. How are we going to do that? Yeah. Which one? Yeah, the, the, the answer was put it back into the equation, and I had to say which one. Because I can guarantee you if I put 0 into the derivative, I get 0. Because we just set it equal to 0 and solved. Okay. But if I put 0 back into the original, it's going to give me a y value, correct? Okay. And so that's what you want to do. So one of the points right here, I'll do this one down here. I don't know why I did red again, but anyways. Zero comma, well, zero is easy. You put zero there, you put zero there, and you get three. So that's apparently a critical point or a possible place where this graph could decide, I'm going to change direction because I don't like where I'm going. All right? Another one is one comma, well, that one's a little bit higher. Yeah, one. Right? You just put one in all those places, right? So really, it's just 4 minus 6 plus 3. Who's good with that? All right. So those are our two possibilities. I have to write the equation over here so I don't forget it. Let's go graph that thing. If you have your own graphing calculator, go right ahead. But like I said, we are a little limited at the moment. Of course, I should probably check my mode. Ah, they're good. All right, y equals 4x the third minus 6x squared plus 3. What were our points again? 0, 3. Well, that's handy dandy right there. And what was the other one? 1, 1. So did this graph decide to change directions at that those two points? It did. Because for all of this time, from negative infinity all the way up to zero, what was this graph trying to do? It was trying to increase, correct? It was going up, having a fine time doing it. And then it something happened, and it says, I don't want to go up anymore. I'm going to go down. But it didn't have too much fun doing that. And so at 1-1, one, one, it said, I think I'm going to go back up. Once again, keep in mind, those are places where it can change direction, does not have to, and did it. Yes. Now, based on that graph, and I am going to have to, everybody's just sketch this graph in there somewhere. 
uh, because we're going to have to talk about these extrema. So everybody got a good sketch, especially those without the graphing calculators right now? At least get it in there kind of close. Of course, we could use the table and get really exact points and all that, but we're running out of time. So, Everybody good? All right. There we go. And based on that, of course, you just saw the graph. What would you call 0, 3 then? Based on the words you have learned today, the four main words, absolute max, absolute min, relative max, relative min, what is 0, 3? Yes. Relative max is correct because we had stuff bigger than it over here. Didn't it go something like this? Right? And so 0, 3 is right here. How come it's not the absolute? It's because of all that stuff. Right? If that stuff wasn't there, would that be the absolute max? Yeah, if I said only look here, then it would be. Okay, but I didn't say only look there. I said look at the whole thing. Okay? And how about 1, 1? Relative min is correct. Because once again, we're looking only right here, and all of that stuff is lower than that, and so it doesn't count. So what if I were to ask you for the absolute max and absolute min for this particular problem? Yeah, we don't know. We don't know. Not necessarily. Uh, the question was, are graph like this only going to have relative? Not necessarily, because what if I say, only look at um, from there to there? Do you agree that this would be, if I said only look between the two red lines, that would be an absolute min? And this one here is the absolute max. Okay. Now, some graphs do still have an absolute min or max. The easiest example of that is the parabola. Are there any relative extrema on, on, extrema on just a parabola? No, that's an absolute max. Wow, yeah. <laughs> Don't ever do that. Okay, absolute min, right? So don't try and focus on just finding the types of graphs. I'd say know what they look like, know what it means. Okay. Was there another hand up, I think? No? I got it? Yes. 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 But I would have to I would have to say in this problem only look from negative one to three. Right, you would try negative one and three and find out is it bigger or smaller. And in fact we're gonna have a problem just like that next where the absolute, if you don't find them in the middle, the absolute can happen at the endpoints. And you really have to check, and it's one that the AP loves to see if you know that. <laughs> they'll, they'll, you'll find the critical numbers that'll give you an interval, and I can guarantee one of those intervals is an absolute max or min. Maybe not both, but one of them is because they want to see if you're gonna check, okay? So here we have, this is actually a pretty interesting graph, but I'm only saying look from negative one to three. And it says determine critical points. How do we do that again? Set what equal to zero? Oh yes, find the derivative. Well, what's the derivative of two x? Two minus. Yep, it is because you take two thirds times negative three, right? Which is negative two, and then x to the. This is the hard part. Negative one third. E. Well, that's. That's not too pleasant now, is it? So in other words, if I rewrite that, my derivative, well, you could, but my derivative is that, right? Notice how I just moved this underneath just that too. I didn't move it underneath both of them because it's only this term that has x to the negative one third in it. Does that make sense? It makes sense to me, but that might sure make sense to you. Now, our job, according to what you wrote down for critical numbers, is to find out where it equals zero or where it is undefined. Are there potential places of undefined this time? Unfortunately, there is, right? But all you have to do is write it down. You just have to know that it's a place where it could happen. And some people, I tell you, you might as well just write it down. 
undefined at x equals zero. Yeah, I can't put zero in because I'd be dividing by zero. But now we also have to say no, where does it equal zero. And seeing our algebra has been somewhat interesting lately, we'll get some suggestions from you as to how to proceed. Lots of things you could do. You could find the common denominator, but I like that zero over there. Let's use it. Let's use it as, as best we can. And here's what I would actually do. It's not the only way. I would actually add this whole big old beast to the other side because then everything's positive. So I would get hmm, 2 over the cube root of x equals 2. Because I can't divide by 0, so I put 0 in there, and 0 made that 0, and so it was dividing by 0. Like if it was x minus 1 in here, it would be 1, because 1 would make it say 0. Right. Mm -hmm. yep. Well, now what? I know what I would do, but it's up to you. Yeah, you could. I don't like variables in the denominator myself. How? How do I bring it up? No, uh, well, yeah, can't we just multiply both sides by the cube root of x? What happens with these cube root of x over here? Yeah, bye-bye. Yeah. I'm running out of room. So here we go. 2 equals 2 cube root of x. Now the dividing by 2 seems, yeah, I think a good idea. Cube root of x equals 1. Very good. How do you get rid of a cube root? Cube it. Yeah, cube this side. Cube that side. And I got stuff all over the place. Sorry about that. Houseify x equals 1. And you got to love it. All that work for 1. Can I erase this stuff? Everybody good for me erasing this? And then equals zero at x equals one. We don't have critical points yet, though. We have critical values. I got to get points. Why put it back in the original? Because I can guarantee what we're going to get if I put it back into the derivative. If I put 1 back in the derivative, we're going to get 0. We just solved for that. So put it back in. Put 0 in, you get 0. All right. So 0, 0 is a critical point. And 1, comma, my base gets 2. What do, what do you get when you take 1 to the 2 thirds power? Yeah, 1. <laughs> 1 to any power is on it doesn't matter so it's basically just saying 2 minus 3 right all right so those are places that it can change direction we'll find out if it does everybody ready I'm just gonna go to the graphing calculator you know, nothing major. okay well, let's get rid of that thing we don't want that anymore yeah so 2x minus 3x to the 2 thirds power. Take note of how I got 2 thirds power on there. And, well, really, I'm only concerned about what? Negative 1 to 3? Well, all right, let's change the window then. x min, negative 1, 2, 3. Uh, I know this graph, so I can change some other things, I think. Let me check to make sure. Mm. Might want to be a little careful. We'll go um, negative 5 to 5. Pretty sure this will be good. Yeah, we'll be good. Oh, 
Well, there it is, negative 1 to 3. Negative 1, 3. So instead of putting the red lines on my graph, I just showed you only what we're supposed to look at. All right. At 0, 0, did it decide to change direction? Aha. Did it decide to change directions? Ooh, and then what's that called again? Cusp, spike. Okay. That's because it was uh, undefined in the derivative, but not undefined in the original. And what was the other one? One, one negative one. Did it change directions? It's kind of hard to see there because we're so zoomed in. But did it? Yeah. It was going down for a while. I don't want to go down anymore. I'm going to go back. Now, get a nice little sketch of that graph. So it's what? Negative 1, comma, negative 5 right down here. That's negative 1, negative 5. 0, 0. 1, negative 1. And apparently, really close to... I don't think it actually gets back to 3, 0. No, I can't. It's a little short. This is a little short of 3, 0. So it's down below. So just get a little sketch of that. And I'll zoom it out if you'd like, so you can see the whole thing, but not much happens after that. This is the most interesting part of the graph. Oh yeah, this is negative one comma negative five. Yep, negative one, negative five. Mm -hmm. You don't have to put arrows because we're only concerned about this part of the graph. This should be all that you're graphing. Okay? So that you can see it on your notes, this is about what it should look like. There you go. Well, maybe a little better than that at the beginning, but... Does it do more? Yes, if I look at the whole graph, but I don't care about the whole graph. I only care about negative 1 to 3. So these directions tell you to determine all absolute and relative extrema. Would anybody like to take a shot at any of those answers? Yes. Absolute min, negative 1, negative 5. Do we have any disagreement with that? Negative 1, negative 5 is that by far, without a doubt, based on where I'm supposed to be looking, the smallest value or lowest in a way. Yeah, that's the absolute min, without a doubt. Yes? Yep, relative min. 1, negative 1. Because we already know negative 1, negative 5 is lower, so it can't, that can't be the absolute, but with what's around it, it's very small. There are actually two others. Yes. Negative one, negative five. That's this one right here. Negative one, negative five. And we were only supposed to go to negative one to three. And so I just kind of looked here to there. And this is just a little short of zero. Yeah. If you had your little table on your calculator, you'd see that. Yeah. And there's more apparently. I see more hands. Yes. Nope. Relative max is not zero, zero. Yeah, that's an absolute max. Zero, zero. There's nothing bigger. Because this one, I told you, doesn't quite get back up there. Right? And so this one is higher than everything else. Without a doubt, higher than everything else. I'd say that would be it, yes. No, there, there is no relative max. Well, you could write you could write this as a relative mat. Three comma negative quarter ish. It is. But relative to what's around it, it is a max. So write that down right now as a relative max. It's 3, comma, about negative 
Because technically, with the stuff around it, there just isn't anything over here that's not that point's fault. Not necessarily. But if there is something on the other side and you're supposed to take it into consideration, you should. Okay. But I'm told to stop. Yep. Because I do believe this graph actually does keep going. Then it wouldn't be. But we're supposed to stop. Any questions on relative max, min, absolute max, min, any of this stuff? 